Welcome back, everybody. Today is the big day. Industrial updates out now on Main Branch, also known as Normal Rust for Rust Console Edition for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, Next Generations, and everything in between. We have a ton to cover, so let's go ahead and peel back the layers. We do have a very nice... Uh, dev blog that came through for us. Let's go ahead and cover it. So it says survivors automation is coming to Rust console edition this month Get ready for a smarter survival experience Streamline your crafting and storage with automation and use new tools to easily move items and modify your base on the fly Gear up for some more details below. We're gonna pull you up to I mean I do there's so much stuff in this There's so many things and we got a lot of helper stuff too to help people kind of uh, Get started with all the new stuff that's uh, coming in here because there's a lot to cover uh, the pipe tool is your go-to for connecting industrial components with pipes. Similar to the wire and hose tool, it supports up to 10 colors for easy identification with gray as the default. Remember, anchor points should be reasonably spaced, allowing up to 16 points within a 30 metry connection. Pipes can pass through deployables like doors, but not solid structures like walls or vending machines. Or can they? Wink! Okay, so I, these are kind of out of order a little bit as far as the way they're explaining it in the dev blog. So I know we've got a lot of guides and tutorials here. So I think this one's probably going to help you the most to get you started, and you would be amazed. So we have the Early Auto Smelt Guide. I'll go ahead and link that now in the upper right-hand corner. De -loop. And don't be intimidated by it, because at first you'll look at this and go, whoa, that's crazy. But like this can be done with a Tier 1 workbench and some metal fragments, because you're already going to have regular furnaces anyway, right? So you might as well get them all hooked up and you will be amazed at how much efficiency you're going to get out of this. Like if, as long as you've got the raw materials and you pump this thing full of wood, you can go out and do monuments, go farming, come back and have stacks of stuff. It's, it, it will blow your mind. Like we've used this in real time in an actual wipe multiple times. And even though like I know the numbers, when you start to feel it on an actual wipe, it, it's so amazing. You're like, I cannot live without this. And this runs on, as I said, Workbench 1, a car battery, and a solar panel. You can buy a solar panel at the outpost. Just saying. It's amazing. Okay, on to uh, the next piece here. I know, I'm so excited for this. I'm so glad we have this. Uh, it says, to isolate a connection with a single pipe, uh, you can connect. So basically for us, you hold, if you have the pipe tool out, you hold reload for us. You can select something on the wheel. If you look at a node here and then tap reload, it'll color the pipe is what they're talking about. Same thing for electric or hose tool, as they said. And I think we're on to storage adapter. Beautiful. Okay, storage adapter. Let's go ahead and bring that in frame. Dee -doo -doo -dee -doo beep. The storage adapter is the input-output port for containers and requires no power to function. Storage adapters are crucial for moving items between containers. Each of these adapters feature an input and output node. Industrial setups would require, no, they do require an industrial conveyor for the storage adapters to function. Not would, they do. When attached to a locker, each storage adapter can only be access, uh, it can only access one partition. You would require three adapters to access all uh, all partitions of the locker. So let me go ahead and show you this here. And I know this is, again, because these are kind of out of order, you should probably know what conveyors and everything else does ahead of time. But essentially, uh, if you want to do an automatic locker, uh, well, first and foremost, I would lock the door, first and foremost. But you can actually have these connected to uh, the different slots in the locker. And as you guessed, we already have a module for that, baby. We've got the Rust Auto Locker. I'll go ahead and link that now in the upper right-hand corner Deloop, if you want to go check that out. And I know this one also probably looks crazy, especially when you get in the video because we have other modules connected. But as the uh, the standard furnace and even the auto locker, this is all modular. You can add them when you have the space and resources to do so. I would recommend doing it in small chunks because I think all together is going to be a bit nuts for sure. Uh, but this one's great. Uh, you can actually have this uh, pipe in different kits. So as people come in and take something out, it will, it will replenish those as well. So it's quite uh, it's quite heady. I think I've got a storage adapter place. There we go. So you've got three different slots here. And I think for this, we have different colored pipes that go to the different areas that make this pretty easy. And you'd be surprised at how much you can actually fit in your base if you start putting these on your ceilings. Also pretty cool. Right? Right. We'll put yellow down here. So, yeah, you get the idea. Auto lockers. If you're going to do an auto locker, make sure you stick a lock on it so they have to destroy the device so they can't just pipe things out of your base. A little tip for you. Wink! All right. So, on to the industrial conveyor. Uh, I'm going to go over here for this example. And this, I think my explanation will help with this for sure. Uh, here's the conveyor right there. 
Industrial conveyor links entities moving items between them, generally via storage adapters. Not generally, they have to be. Unlike storage adapters, conveyors need power to operate. Once powered, they pull items from input containers and distribute them among connected outputs. I, that's kind of a, for me, uh, words don't do a whole lot sometimes, so hopefully this will help people out. Essentially, if you have something you want to interact with, let's say this box, you have to have a storage adapter on top. And in order to take things out or move things in, if you'd like to move things into this box, you're going to have to have a conveyor on the left. If you want to take things out of the box, you'll have to have a conveyor on the right, and this allows you to interface with it as well. And uh, if we have another, where is it at? Is it right here somewhere? Do I have it somewhere? Hey, let me turn on my, there we go. We got it somewhere. You've got multiple locations where you can stick these storage adapters to. Some of them have more than others, but you'd be surprised that we can actually attach storage adapters to. And they're clearly labeled as an input and an output as well. So hopefully that helps you out. By the way, if you want this kind of broken down, um, well, actually, you know what? We'll wait this. We'll wait for the next one because I think this falls in line with our electric furnace. So we'll wait. We'll hold up on that. Uh, conveyor can transfer multiple stacks at once with a maximum capacity of six items per stack um, per per tick. Excuse me. If a stack count is over sixty, it will be moved over several ticks. By default, a, com a conveyor is programmed to move any item it can find. So in its default state. Uh, it's going to move everything. For us, our interface is a little bit different. Watch that right thumbstick because we're used to using that to move around between fields. Uh, you always want to set it on the top one that says any. And, uh, well, it's essentially this here, but um, it's so easy to move that. So always, if you're checking your inputs or your conveyors, just make sure that right thumbstick has it set to any item. It's just really easy to drag down, or even if you have stick drift, it's really going to mess you up bad. Uh, for precise control over items you're moving, you can assign a filter to the conveyor. Each filter allows you to manage up to 30 items across 19 categories. Additionally, you can customize the filter by a minimum setting, maximum, and buffer quantities for each. Da -da -da -da. Uh, setting minimum value. This is a very confusing paragraph. At least it was for me. Setting a minimum value to an item would let the conveyor transfer the item to the output until the count reaches the specified number in the input source. What? Setting a maximum value to an item will let the conveyor transfer items until the count reaches specified number in the target output. Setting a buffer value to an item would let the conveyor to only would let the conveyor to only move in chunks of that size. Uh, I think we have. Is this where we set this one up? I think we did. We add this one. Uh, industrial splitter. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in now uh, ahead of time because I think this covers industrial splitter and the uh, combiner and the electric furnace. So in the interest of, because we have to have these spaced out in like 30 minute intervals or 30 minute, 30 second intervals for, um, for YouTube. Anyways, if you want to know more about conveyors, adapters, or even how to plug in your furnaces, your electric furnaces, this guide is for electric furnaces, but it covers lots of things. So I'll go ahead and put the electric furnace guide up in the upper right hand corner now. Deloop. If you want to go check that out, again, you can always rewind the video and come back and check these out uh, as well. That should really, really help you. This is like the lowdown on how to like set it up, set it up. You'd be surprised. It looks crazy, but it's actually not too bad. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? And yes, you can cram these electric furnaces anywhere. All right. So industrial splitter. This, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Industrial splinter does not require power or allow, and, I'm sorry, and allows you to branch a single pipe into three different pipes. When connected to a conveyor, it divides items among linked entities based on their filter applied. So essentially, you can have one conveyor pulling from multiple sources if you split it. And conversely, same thing with a combiner, which I think they cover almost exactly that. Um, so essentially, if you've got, uh, and again, this first tutorial will show you that you can actually have things across multiple uh, storage adapters and then actually have them pulled by just one device because you can see right here this guy is oops didn't mean to do that this guy here is actually pulling from all three furnaces and this one feeds all three furnaces so you only need two conveyors for three or six or ten essentially that's what they're talking about the industrial splitter will always adhere to 60 items per stack, I'm sorry, per server tick limit. The splitter will divide 60 items into the number of connected containers evenly. If three containers are connected, the stack will split uh, by 20. Industrial combiner. The industrial combiner is the inverse of the splitter and combines up to three pipes into a single pipe. The industrial combiner comes in handy when trying to merge items from three containers into a single container, reducing the need for multiple conveyors. Just know that if you want to have like your whole base piped into lockers, uh, using combiners is the way to go. And then you kind of feed it in and then let the splitter do its work. 
uh, from here because these will be smart enough to pull from the whole system. It'll make more sense after you've kind of gone in there and done it a little bit. Strongly recommend you jump into Builder's Paradise to do like small sets. Again, if you're going to do any of these tutorials, jump in Builder's Paradise, dude. I'm telling you it's going to help. Big time. Big time. Big time. Electric Furnace, which we had that tutorial already covered over there, which should help with the combiners and such. The Electric Furnace is the upgraded version of the regular furnace, offers a higher smelting rate, and it requires power instead of wood. As a result, it does not produce charcoal. You can't even feed wood into it. So as, as cool as these are, and you're going to use these, these electric furnaces, you're still going to have some form of standard furnaces and also a bubbler. Um, they're really good at creating charcoal. So later on, believe it or not, you'll be popping teas, chainsaw and stuff, and just loading these up just to get charcoal. I know it sounds crazy, but it's going to be a thing, I promise. So having these piped in is still going to be well worth your time. So you can already start to see. You can use this with the level one, get this going, and still use it late game. Boo yeah. Uh, industrial crafter. This one's pretty hot. Uh, the industrial crafter needs to be connected to a power source and placed on a workbench to function. Blueprints and raw materials would uh, would be required for the items you wish to uh, craft using the industrial crafter. The blueprint for the desired item should be compatible with the workbench on which the crafter is placed. So um, it looks like this here. And again, same rules apply. If you have something you're interacting with, you'll have a conveyor on the left to feed it and a conveyor on the right to pull things out. A lot of times I like to have the pipe tool out so you can see the flow of things. And you guessed it, we also have a module for this as well, the auto craft setup. I'm going to go ahead and link that now in the upper right hand corner. Deloop, if you want to go check that out now or later, depending. Uh, and again, all modular, this feeds into the same system that you've seen with the auto locker, the auto smelt, everything else. And uh, we definitely did this in stages. And man, like having med pens being crafted while you're gone is so OP. And you can like set a limit on it too. To be like, okay, only make six. Now imagine combining that with your auto locker. So when you pull a kit, it'll automatically craft what it just uh, whatever you took out and then it'll feed the rest of it through the system. It's disgusting. Uh, also, I think th they mentioned this too, but it's not super obvious. You will need to have a loosey-goosey blueprint up here. So like, you know the ones we research and then uh, right click on or hit Y uh, and learn, you need to take that physical blueprint and stick it in here. So also if you get raided and you have an auto crafter, it's like a jackpot for knowledge for other people. So you're going to want to really keep those protected, just saying that's going to be a thing. So having a little bit of extra scrap to do all your extra stuff is definitely going to be uh, a new thing for us. Okay, on to the next piece here. Uh, it says use the pipe tool to access input nodes for raw materials, output nodes for the crafted items. The industrial crafter also has a blueprint in and out. Yes, you can feed it through the pipe system blueprints itself, which is crazy, uh, which allows automatic blueprint swapping after each item is crafted. By the way, <laughs> here's another couple uh, couple tips here for you. If you want this thing to chill out, like let's say your output's here, and it, you, let's say okay, let's say it's med pens. Uh, you probably want to stick some uh, blank stuff here, <laughs> like some stone, and then just let it craft, and then your industrial conveyor will just pull out the med pens instead of it filling up eight med pens and then uh, pulling it out. Just a little tip there. And also, the auto crafter, as it stands now, is stupid loud. So um, it's the best to run it when you're not in the base if you want to keep your sanity. There you go. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Ah, this one's hot. The seismic sensor. Let me go ahead and walk over here real fast. This one's... They snuck this one in, and this is actually brand new for PC. This has not been out for us for very long at all. Seismic sensor. Be warned if an explosion in the vicinity with the seismic sensor, a brand new tool that detects explosions from rockets, C4, and explosive ammo with an adjustable 1 to 30 metri radius. Note, it won't detect Molotovs, but it is very smart. The seismic sensor outputs different power values based on the type of explosion that is detected. Um... Uh, yeah, I might as well link this now. Uh, right here is the secret that they put in the update. This covers a lot of the stuff they're talking about, but also shows you real-time examples. I'll go ahead and link this now in the upper right-hand corner. Deep, if you want to go check that out now or later, uh, and hopefully we haven't hit our maximum card limit in the video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Probably. Uh, also, and I do cover this in the video as well, uh, one power, it can detect a bean can or F1. Two power that comes out of there will be an explosive ammo or satchel charge. And three units of power, rockets or C4. Again, I have real world examples in that video that will really kind of blow your mind. And you can start to add those to your base like today when the wipe happens. Uh, yeah, you'll be like, what? I can actually do this? Yeah, it's crazy. On to the next big piece, which 
I think a lot of people are very excited for. I know I am. And man, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, this changes the way you play like r off the rip. Everybody, especially the solos when you're putting down your first base. Much awaited backpacks will continue. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We'll be coming to Rust Console Edition. I can't read. With the industrial update, allowing you to maximize your inventory space, gather more loot, and enhance your survival experience. Boing. Yeah, you can carry your whole base in your back. Small backpack. This is a craftable backpack that is a default blueprint and can be crafted for 50 cloth and 5 sewing kits. Yikes, on a tier 1. So, outpost, baby. The small backpack consists of 12 slots, which I believe is a small box. Large backpack. This backpack is not craftable, but can only be obtained through military crates. So, dome, uh, water treatment. You'd be surprised. Uh, what is it? The uh, gas station. Excuse me, the gas station. Um, you'd be surprised. The drop rate's pretty good. And you'll just be stockpiling this. And I got to tell you, uh, since we've been playing the wipes on this, when you raid a base, take a large backpack. It'll change your life. Uh, the large backpack consists of 28 slots. I mean, need we say more? Both backpacks take a few seconds to pick up. That's very important. They despawn slower when filled with valuables and drop upon death, allowing others to loot them. Here's another big, juicy tip for you. If you're farming a lot and you've got people in the base, come back with the farm on your back, drop it in front of the guy who's processing it, and then go right back out. It's OP. This one's hot. We have the night light that's coming in. Navigating the island at night can be tough, so we're adding the night light feature in Rust Console Edition Industrial Update. The subtle shader mimics moonlight, illuminating a small, a small radius, uh, making it easier for you to navigate while keeping surrounding darkness intact. This one's also hot. Moon pools on everything. Moon pools are coming to the large and small oil rigs, making it as accessible to submarines and divers. This provides a different and possibly safer way uh, to the monument. This means you can now dive or sub your way to the monument depths below. Once inside the moon pool, you can climb the pipe several floors with exits at water level and third floor of the rig. Doors on the pipe can be open and closed but not locked. I can also confirm uh, when you've been countered on oil and making a return, especially if you're a small group or you're attacking another group that's either heavily geared or they have a tugboat boarded, the moon pool is an excellent way to come back and rebound. Um, yeah, all of this stuff is fantastic. I mean, just the backpacks alone are a game changer, but like the industrial, the moon pools, all this stuff, it's crazy good. Uh, Matt, excited for this. Can't wait for you guys to see this. We're going to be live streaming this, of course. And uh, please give the custom servers that I have a bit of time to update because I believe almost every update takes like a hot second uh, for it to catch. So uh, stay tuned for that. And hopefully we'll see you on the custom server, the live stream, or in the next video. And if you are interested in the unraidable or anti-raid base using all of these goodies, it should already be up on the end screen now. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye. Oops, 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 oops. Oops, oops.